Hello there and welcome to You and Plus show, weekly show. You're talking to me. Here today we're going to talk about austerity in Europe, the positive and negative impacts. And in front of me I have two guests, two members of the European Parliament, Mr. Lambert van Nistelrooy from the Christian and Democrats. Hello. And Mrs. Elisa Ferreira from the Socialist Democrats. Hello yes. and welcome Hello. to you both. So I don't know if it's the first time that you are uh, both in a in a debate all together. Your first I time? I think so. Yes. yes. Okay, so a big and new experience. So uh, first of all, in few year, in few words, um, the austerity policies uh, put in place in Portugal, your country, Mrs. Ferreira, what do you think? They, do they have uh, been effective or not? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for this uh, debate. It's, uh, it's very important and very timely. Um, well, I think uh, we had uh, the need to do some adjustments in Europe. Uh, we recognized that it would be important to change some of, uh, of the policies uh, that were not delivering, uh, but uh, the austerity program didn't work at all. I think it was, uh, the adjustment was too strong. Uh, there were technical problems with the, with the recommendations that were imposed on these countries. Uh, and so instead of uh, reshaping the countries, uh, and in particular my own country, to become more competitive, uh, the outcome was that we triggered huge recession, huge unemployment, a loss of wealth, Uh, and now young people, the most well-prepared people, they, they just decided to immigrate. So even conditions for future growth uh, have been uh, seriously jeopardized. So I think we need to learn with our mistakes, uh, and I hope we do in the future understand that uh, we have got to be technically very, very sound when we make these kind of recommendations. Mm. And you, uh, Mr. Mr. Ho, in your country, the Netherlands, uh, maybe it's a richer country than Portugal, but how do you you see this uh, austerity policies? Okay, in the Netherlands we were right on track. We could reach our 3% target already and then the banking crisis came, you know, uh, originally from the United States came to Europe and then we went, we went down with our results. But now, even in this year, we are again under the 3% and on track and even youth employment is getting better and, and better. So do you think it's a good solution? So uh, Of course, you have to, uh, if you are sick, you go to a doctor. The doctor says that you have to recover and he gives you some medicaments or other things. So let's be fair and say that there was an enormous problem and the biggest problem for Portugal, mm -hmm. for instance, is that But you have more high roads than, United, than, than, than Germany. Mm -hmm. And that's the really reason why if you don't invest correctly, you make not the progress that you want. You want to say something, Mrs. Yes, Ferrer? I didn't understand what it was. It was high roads that you mentioned. Yes, yes. I am the rapporteur in the European Parliament for the investment funds. We have some 400 billion for the next years to invest. And we have said now that we spend less in roads. Portugal mm -hmm. has 60% more high roads per capita than Germany. And they send the youth out. This is what you told. This is an own policy that was not correct. So in terms of own delivery in the States, this is also important. Don't just blame Europe. Yes, yes. But the la yeah. last, in last October, mm -hmm. the International Federation of Red Cross say that austerity has been pushing Europe into social and economic decline. And actually, the Spanish Red Cross has even launched a national appeal uh, to help Spanish people. So we actually have uh, our correspondent, Spanish correspondent, and she will uh, ask you a question about the social and health effects in Spain. Hello, hola, Andrea. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, yes, you can ask your question to our guests. Yeah, I would like to know, uh, to know what they think about the Spanish health and social service budget that have been subject a large cut. I mean, in 2012, uh, we lose the 13% of investment in Spanish health, and in 2013, it was nearly 16%. And I would like to know how can you explain all this cut to the citizens uh, when you know the salaries of, uh, for example, regional politician or minister are uh, quite high. 
do the politicians have any responsibility on the crisis? And uh, are you going or someone is going to pay for that apart from the citizens? I'm totally aware of the fact that the cuts have also touched, uh, for instance, healthcare and social services. That's the same in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, we now have a cut of some, over the years, often 25% of this social uh, help for health, and we created new systems for insurance, for instance, so that you don't only get the money from the state or your regional government or your community, but you have an own self Insurance. So there are other possibilities to strengthen people and to keep a good level of living. But I'm aware that there has been a big slowdown and a lot of people have got into problems. Mm, and even, uh, for example, in Greece as well, we see that people cannot even pay for the health yes. care. So, Mrs. Ferreira, you I want think to think think Europe, Europe has developed very, very strong imbalances. So the situation in the north and situation in countries from the periphery or the center, they have completely different um, uh, situations in terms of the economic welfare, economic uh, uh, social welfare, capacity for young people to find jobs. So, and these imbalances, they are growing far apart. And after the crisis, they went even more far apart. And the kind of, uh, of damage that we are doing in the health services in Spain, in Greece, in Portugal, is really uh, against all the principles, the basic principles of, uh, of the European integration. And we are losing the old people, we are losing the public services, and we are losing our competitiveness. So uh, this simplistic way of uh, these ones are in a bad situation because they, were, they did wrong, and these ones are very well because they did right, is completely misleading, and uh, it's, not, uh, it's, it's too simplistic we uh, have decided to create a monetary union. So you let go your budget, you get low, go your own policies, you let go uh, the, your currency. So you don't have, you let go a lot of things. And, and the just health is putting in the second place. And just competition doesn't really bring things in a convergent way. They fall apart. And this came, and the crisis came, don't forget that it was yourself who said that the crisis came from the financial markets. And it was because of financial markets and not because of having you having airports and we having roads that, uh, that things fell apart. They fell apart Maybe. because for too long we didn't regulate yeah, yeah. or supervise financial markets. Mr. Van Nistelo, can Maybe. you react about this? Yes, please. Yeah, I think there is a mix of these causes because the, the report that we got last week in the parliament looking back was that there are fundamental causes in the economies in the southern states. And as I said before, the main point is that you don't produce, you, that you don't export enough. And if you don't export, you can spend the money. Look to Greece. Greece hardly makes anything. Greece does not export. And you cannot spend money. This is an easy economic rule if you don't produce and export. And this is the back, backbone of the new economy. And young people understand that they should not leave from Portugal, but produced in the north of, in the region north. I visited, all industry has gone, so they should think about reindustrialization and also, let me say, for uh, energy uh, friendly production and like that. They have great chances, but the policy should be changed. Mm. So more exports, exports, but what about cuts? So we will come back to some cuts uh, with, um, a po with a Polish student so, um, who also wants to ask you both a question. Hello from Warsaw. Hello. My name is Paweł, as, we, uh, as I was presented. Um, I've got a question. Uh, question, one question. Ten years ago, many young people in Poland um, got a job, could benefit from additional training. I mean post-graduational education. This was good for us, for young people, who could improve their skills and uh, it was good also for bosses uh, who had more qualified employees. And now with the crisis and um, the politics, uh, the employers reduced costs and uh, there are no more chance uh, for employees to have this training. Is there any European plans to resolve this problem? Mr. Van Nistelrooy. Yes, you thank you for the question. I understand uh, the necessity to have training. And that's why we have 
changed the contribution of the social fund from 16% of our total funds to 23% to give specially training of young people more emphasis, more possibilities. And this is something that can be done in your country. Poland get the most of all the funds, of the structural funds. So go ahead. Mm, and you, yeah. Mrs. Ferreira, what I do you think? think? So uh, there are some, some money to put on trainings. Yes, and yes, yes, be careful, be careful. Use very, very carefully the structural funds. The kind of accusation that uh, Portugal did a lot of highways, was most of them were financed by the regional fund. From the investment, one third goes immediately to the member states that uh, are uh, as the suppliers of this kind of help. And then uh, um, you are blamed because you, you, you need infrastructures. On the training, uh, Portugal was identified what the most important problem for competition in Portugal was lack of uh, education and training in youth. We trained them, uh, we became first in the PISA statistics, and then uh, there was this austerity uh, stance was imposed on the country and uh, all the, the most well-prepared people had to go, and now they are working in Germany and they have immigrated to America and all over. So don't forget that inside uh, Europe you are among friends, but also competitors. So be very careful when you understand what kind of a strategy you want to follow, because uh, we always believed in Portugal that we were okay, that we could uh, we could trust. Thank we are you, addressing yeah. Europe as the teachers, uh, big brothers. No, we are all the same, and we have got to look after our national interests, uh, even if believing and uh, participating actively into an European spirit. Thank you, Mrs. Ferreira. So thank you to Powell and Andrea. So we will uh, go on with this debate. So, uh, Mr. Van Nistelrooy, so wh what do you think? So, we, do you think austerity policies should be focused on the ones who get low and medium salaries, or maybe m more focused on the richer? Or I think that the most important thing is that you give companies, small and medium-sized companies, new startups, young people, starting with an app company, you know, creating app. Look to the cities. Look to Berlin. A lot of young people start, and the most important thing now is to give them credits, to give them the starting money to start this, this own enterprise. And it is even possible in the north of Portugal or wherever. So it's more important to know where the growth is. And this is the, the policy Europe can c contribute very strongly. We have now a COSME program for new starters, and we have the European Investment Bank who can give loans more than ever before. So the, the, does the European Union... Do, can do something today to create more jobs, to Absol give to the absolutely. people the 20, more than the 26 million of unemployed people, not only absolutely. the Absolutely, but this most important point is that the banks at this moment, they don't deliver. And young people need their starting credits, their starting money, and to, to, to have the first experiences. And we should much more support them, and we do. This is the direction, not looking especially to the government to hold up the hand. No, start on your own. Mm, do you yes. believe in that? Yes. Uh, for the Something future? has got to change in the overall uh, policy, because if we insist that we did right, and that it is right, the policy that we have done in Europe, when all the people and uh, young people are really absolutely depressed and disappointed, and if we claim that, yes, we did right, as uh, some political forces are saying, I think we may... Uh, di disconnect completely the population from the politicians. Uh, I think we have got to understand that uh, the adjustment that was adopted in Europe was not right. It's not normal that Greece has got to lose in a couple of years 25% of its wealth, uh, that 60% of the young population is unemployed. So something went wrong. Let's be frank. Uh, what do we learn? Let's be frank. What is the best order? You're right, totally right. That, uh, for instance, Greece Real Greece fell back. But the point is that there should be your own power in an economy. As I said, if you don't produce, you cannot spend, you cannot eat. This is rather easy. Then we have a social Europe in which we have a balance, of course. But if the economy, if the productivity of this Greece economy doesn't grow, they will never get to the really competition that we want worldwide. The, the Asian people, Brazil, does not wait on Europe. 
we have to compete as well. So in that terms, uh, we have to change our educational systems and especially our advanced industries. So yes. there is, a, I mean, there is a, do you think there is an alternative to yes, austerity there policies? There is an alternative, there is an alternative. Uh, one of the issues is that we have got to regulate uh, clearly the banking system. Uh, countries like the Netherlands or Ireland or even the UK depend in too much, you talk about production, but these countries leave out the financial uh, institutions. Some of them went too far in risk taking. Even some big banks from traditionally industrialized countries such as Germany, some of these big banks, they went into a lot, a lot of risky business and so they were very open to the negative impact that came from the, the globalized economy, mm -hmm. uh, from in particular with the crisis from, uh, from, the, from the United States. And then, of course, the countries that were weaker, they could not stand the impact of this negative this crisis. This do the European Union let them, let them no, do what we, they want? Or? No, I think to the young people. And that's why that European funds, we bring 1% of our general income to Europe. And this some 40% of that going to the poorer parts of, the, of, of Europe. This is the internal solidarity. And it should reach new initiatives of young people or communities or co cooperatives in any Energy production and sustainable energy production. So they, at this moment, I ask young people to take this your, your, uh, opportunities to go in the debate and maybe for some time work in another country uh, that you have experienced. Don't so, so. lose your good times. You're young. So do we reach uh, an economic crisis recovery? We are yes, here? we do now because this is out of the out of the figures. Most of the countries will reach a growth next next year, especially Poland, as the young man said, is doing very well. Germany is doing well, and the other countries need some more time probably to get on. Look to Ireland, and maybe next year there is a good story for Portugal. Yeah. Are you confident Portugal. as well? Uh, I'm confident if we are serious enough to understand where we did wrong. And we did wrong in not regulating financial services. We did very wrong because we cannot pretend that having let go your currency is the same thing as having it. So let's look at the European uh, common currency and understand that there are holes, that they are loopholes in the whole architecture and address them, and let's organize some sort of minimum level of quality of life that protects people from these extremely violent adjustments because we are losing a whole generation. Yes, we can say that you have got to have credit and start enterprises, but you have got to sell to someone. And if all, everybody inside Europe does recessionary policies, that's the other name for austerity policies, then of of course, you trigger a big depression, and that's what we did in Europe, because we're not able, like the Americans were, to support the minimum of internal Mister, demand and, and create conditions for growth. Uh, yes, maybe the last I don't reaction, think, because don't we're think going to we, end it up. Yes, soon. of course. We, I don't think we created it. It's in some way, uh, it's, it's the banking system, it's the financial crisis, and the thing now is not to blame, but to take initiatives and to listen very, very well to the farmers, listen to the directors of the schools, listen to the young people. And especially, I think there can be a quick recovery. I see the next years going up. And that's what EPP supports strongly. Mm. So yes. what, what we are going to be to reach is the European elections. So <laughs> what uh, are you expected? For oh, this? I, I think it will be re-elected. My place on the list, personally, I will advocate for, for personal votes because oh, I'm now really, really at, the seventh, at the seventh place yeah. and we are only, only four. But I did in the past very well in my region uh, to get people vote on me. Uh, every week, one day, I listen to young people and to others. And I know very well that they are with a lot of concern. But don't just blame. Be positive, innovate, and this creates wealth. And that's uh, I agree that we shouldn't blame, but we should take lessons. Uh, for uh, the past, the recent past, we had uh, uh, no proper discussion of the strategies because we had the dominant position of the right on uh, the council, uh, the commission and parliament. So if we didn't like what happened, we have got to make a huge change. And I hope this will help, this help the socialists to be the biggest, uh, the biggest group, political group in the parliament and be able to elect uh, a socialist commissioner 
just to look exactly at the other side of the coin because it has been it we could have done it differently and it uh, the damage to the to the youth would have been smaller uh, or even non-existent so i think we have got to learn from the lessons okay we will stop here so thank you for both of okay, you because you. it was a lively debate thank you. and thank you uh, to all of you to follow us on you and plus and see you next week ciao